Hello guys, this is Dhopal. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to discuss about execute, submit, invoke all and invoke any method difference and the real time uses of the corresponding methods. And this is a uh, one of the important topic under Java Util Concurrent Package and uh, this is a 9 number episode if you are new in my youtube channel so i'll suggest subscribe the channel and press the bell icon in order to get all the updated video related to java and the concurrency and microservices okay so let's come back to our main discussions areas so first of all execute so execute method is belongs to executor main interface and there is another sub interface which extend the executor interface the name is executor service this interface basically contains submit method invoke all method and invoke any methods so those methods are available under executor service interface and only execute method available executor main interface so first of all let's see the signature of the methods so execute this method signature it's accept the runnable interface but it won't return anything you can see simply void now submit this is a overloaded method why overloaded method one method is taking tax as a callable okay and another method is taking tax as a runnable so both cases you can see it is written type is future object okay now third method is invoke all so invoke all this method also a overloaded method this method takes one method takes inputs the collections of callable tasks okay and another method is takes collections of callable tasks plus time unit means over the seconds milliseconds plus the time value and why this is required i'll discuss later of this video and the last method that is invoke any so this is also a overloaded method one form is it is taking you can see the collections of callable tasks and it will return the single future object and in this case list of future and also the second method it's a similar just only things the time unit and time value it is taking like a similar to invoke all okay so now let's understand the difference now execute method if your tasks don't expect any result from the executions then you should go for the execute method that is means either this particular task will run in a new thread or threadful or might be the calling thread but its own return any things this is that's what the return type is void but if you want your after completions the task you want whatever the result is coming or might be some status that's to be captured from this task then definitely you should go for the submit method okay so which is written the future so from this object you can get uh, or you can retrieve the result by using the get method so if you are you are trying to create a new thread so using the runnable you can use that method or if you want to run under the same thread then you should go for the callable method now so in order to differentiate execute and submit method so let me give you one real time uses so let's assume you need to fetch lots of data from one table and you have created the task now so after completion this task you don't want any status from this particular record so definitely you should go for the execute method but if you want whether the task has been completed and some return value which needs to be executed by others method that time you should go for this submit method and again based on your requirement either you can go for the callable or you can go for the runnable this approach now what is invoke all 
as i mentions this fast method is taking a collections of callable object so why collections let's assume so you need to run a multiple tasks means multiple independent tasks uh in my case so now one data has to be fetched from the database another data has to be fetched from the uh, kafka topic another data has to be fetched from the any other smq services now there is a three tasks and now you want all the three tasks should be part of this list of collections as a callable and after completions all those tasks you need all the tasks result so that time you should go for the invoke call because it's return type also a list of future object so now as i mentions there is another form of this method nothing but overloaded method which is taking another two parameter one is time unit with a second milliseconds microseconds and the time value let's say 10 seconds if you provided time unit as a seconds so now what will happen so after 10 seconds if all the tasks will not able to complete so that time it will throw a timeout exception so that's the use of this uh, particular overloaded methods now invoke any so invoke any so this method also taking a collections of callable tasks but return type is only one why only one so i'll tell you with the example and real time uses now it's more likely similar to invoke all but only one of the executions result should be captured in the return type and which will be completed first assume there is a four tax and uh, you want if one tax got completed then immediately I'll get the result and then I'll pass this result to others method or anywhere in my project. So now you can think okay so what might be the use case of this method. Yes so there is a lots of use case of this method. So let me give you one of the real time example. Let's assume your application is going to provide a login facility to the end user. Now one case you can use the login as a mail or different way of the authentications like SSO or SAML so different form now there is a four ways you are actually trying to authenticate the user for accessing the applications now your target should be if any of the method or way user get the authenticate then he or she can access these applications right so that is means you don't need all the four methods should be completed you want only one way if user authentication is done and whichever is the first and you should get the authentication status and you can give the access to the user to use the applications so in this case you can put all the mechanism of the authentication process and create a separate separate uh, callable tax and put it in the collections as a callable tax and then if one of the method get executed and that status got verified okay user authenticate then immediately it should capture this one then others method will not be considered so you are getting the status and now you are passing that status to the others methods for the further processing purpose so that's the main use cases of invoke any so likewise there is a lots of example let's assume there is a different way of shorting method now user is providing the data you know for short the numbers now whichever shorting algorithms run fast so this should be captured okay and the user will get the output and now another method of form I mentioned overloaded method so let's assume so if you are giving a time unit as a seconds and the value is 10 seconds so within 10 seconds at if one task is not able to complete then it will throw a timeout exceptions just remember for invoke any only one task will be 
completed not all are invoke all for all the tasks will completed and it you will get the all the tasks result under list of future hope this concept has been clear to you so still if you have any doubt just let me know in the comment sections and don't worry about the uh, details so you'll get in the description sections and don't forget to check out my github account because i'll be providing all those coding stuff in my github account so you can download it and you can run it for your reference purpose that's all in this video i'll see you in next lecture bye bye